So how many of you have attended convocation, world convocation, SRF world convocation? Okay, excellent. And how many have not? You've <laughs> never been there. Okay, very good. So about half and half. And how many of you have already read the article I wrote for the September newsletter for the retreat? Oh, even less. Good. So I may just read my newsletter article. <laughs> okay. So um, some of you I know well, and some of you not so well. So let me just tell you a little bit about who I am and why I'm speaking about the Self-Realization Fellowship's 2018 World Convocation. So my name is Dorothy Stingley, and uh, I first came to the ranch in 1977, and uh, I was younger. <laughs> um, and uh, Yogacharya Oliver Black lived here at that time. So we, each time that I came on these visits, he was here, he was living here. And uh, some of you know me know that I was working for the Michigan Department of Labor. I had graduated from our alma mater, Michigan State University. And this was my second job out of college as a job developer. So some of you, how many of you have read the autobiography of a yogi? Great. So remember the story about Lahiri Mahashai getting a job in a new place and then meeting Babaji and Babaji saying he had something to do with the job? Well, in retrospect, I guarantee you that this crazy job I had with the state of Michigan brought me here. And that had to be the purpose of it. And I just know that. Here, I know that. So my territory for the Michigan Department of Labor as a job developer was everything north of Mount Pleasant. And the key here is that I was young enough that I thought that was sane. <laughs> to drive around in the winter from Detroit to Lansing to Houghton, Michigan. And I thought whiteouts were adventures. <laughs> so this year, for the first time, as someone who became a member of the Self-Realization Fellowship in 1979 and was initiated into Kriya, which is the formal way that you join the fellowship. I've never gone to the fellowship's world convocation until this year. And again, all I can tell you, I looked for data, but there's no data. Somewhere along the way, it made sense to me that I was going to convocation this year, and I made a reservation, and I reserved a suite at the Biltmore. Who knows why? I, I don't need a suite, but I did. And then at a board meeting, we got to talking about the possibility of board members meeting with the board or some of the leaders of SRF at convocation, and before I knew it, my suite at the Biltmore was full. <laughs> and Linda and Carol and I were staying there together and had made plans to travel together. So the real story is the in-between time all these years. Why not? Just all of it, why not? And, um, so I'm gonna start at the end of convocation and tell you a very personal story. So when I got to the Kriya ceremony, which is at the end of the week on Friday afternoon, I had a blue ticket. And everyone was explaining to me that I shouldn't have a blue ticket 
because I've been a Creon for so many years, but I had a blue ticket. And I was telling the glided teachers a few minutes ago that um, everybody I happened to meet at convocation had some connection with this place or named people from here. It was uncanny, and it was no different this day. The usher who saw me brandishing my blue ticket took me aside and said to me, first of all, we made a connection. I found out he, I'm, I'm not gonna go there. I found out he knew someone from the retreat as soon as he met me, and I told him where I was from. And uh, he said, come with me. He said, people would die for this ticket that you've got. He said, come with me. He said, people are competing for this ticket. He said, you don't want to give this away. Because this other usher was talking me out of it. And he took me over and put me at the front of the line with the brand new initiates. Because when you go the first time, you sit in the front. So I watched everyone else come in from the side, and, and they took us to the front, and I was in the front row with the whole presentation in front of me. And some of you who were here at Yoga Fest the last couple of years know that one of the things I've been talking about is uh, immortality. I'm very interested in immortality these days. <laughs> and uh, the other thing I've been talking about prior to that was the stages of life and trying to figure out since I, you know, when should I move out of householder and into retirement and then what's the end look like? And here's what I will say about the Kriya initiation ceremony, in addition to a million things you can ask me about later, is that in my mind's eye, I saw the last 40 years, and I saw the next 40 years, and clearly the inner voice said, I don't need to worry about it. So I've given all that up. So if you were hoping to hear those talks again, I'm done with them. <laughs> and I'm adopting what Master Yogananda used to say, which is I'm going to die with my boots on. So one of the things I see clearly is that one of my roles, or Naren, we were talking about my true nature that I'm investigating, is that I'm someone who connects and builds bridges. And I see a role for myself as a member of the board now in being a convocation. And here's what's at the heart of it for me. There may no, there, it's not there may be. There are as many points of view as there are people in this room. And in the center's department meeting, Sandy, they reminded us that all of Master's disciples are strong-willed. So we're not only opinionated, we're strong-willed. So I know who I'm dealing with, okay? But I can tell you that the thing I came away from convocation with is I'm really clear that somewhere in my heart, I belong to Yogananda. And when you spoke yesterday about him calling souls, that he and Yogacharya called my soul in to this place. So I know that whatever it is that we're all doing in the future, we're all doing it together, and I know who you are.